Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we're doing our weekly nursery tour. It is getting to be the end of May. The heat is about to hit here in North Carolina and we have got some beautiful plants that can handle the heat with no problems. So you will see we have got the tropical hibiscus here. Now these are tropical hibiscus, which means they are not gonna survive the winter. These are those, of course, those gorgeous classic um, iconic summer by the pool kind of shrub that we think of. Interestingly enough, the hibiscus, their blooms only last for a day. So, and they open and close with the sun. So that's why you don't see a lot of open blooms right now. These are all part of the Hollywood hibiscus series. This particular one is called Playboy. Um, I think Jerry can get in there and show you that bloom. But there's lots of beautiful colors. This is kind of that uh, corally orange color. There's one drama queen. Drama queen is a white one. Then there um, show off. Then there's a show off. There's all sorts of fun names associated with this whole series, and they're just fantastic. Of course, your tropical hibiscus. We're going to need some sun. They are not shade plants, and they do great in a container or a landscape. So if you're looking for um, an easy pop of annual color that just keeps going, you might want to check out these tropical hibiscus. We also have, look at these, the fun mandevilla. Again, mandevillas open and close. So we have red and we have pink. These are in the little six inch pots, very versatile. So you can take these and really just kind of do whatever you want to with them. You want to put them in the landscape. You want to make a container with them and fill in. This would be great. Again, these are going to be annuals. The container is coming along quite nicely. We're going to plant the other one hopefully this week so we can have a video coming out for you to show you exactly how I created this um, really fun, pretty, unique container. It's a lot of fun and it's doing great. Super excited about that. Now talking about mandevillas, let me introduce you to Alice. This is Alice DuPont. It is a beautiful climbing, trailing mandevilla, just a beautiful pink color. The different age blooms will have um, a little bit of a different color. So on the same plant, you can get a variation of light blooms, um, a deeper, richer pink, just a lot of fun. Again, you can put this directly into the ground. You can put it into, into a container by your mailbox. This would be a great climber for your mailbox. It already has the trellis attached to it, so you just plant the whole thing, leave the trellis attached, and then just plant it up to next to something, and it'll continue to climb on the trellis, and then whatever it is that you have there. Um, as you can see, super vigorous. I mean, look at this. It's climbing itself. It's wrapping around itself to climb, so these are fantastic. Again, they are annuals, one season. We've got, oh my gosh, if you're looking for a big pop of color, then these gallon petunias are the way to go. So this is Vista Supertunia, Vista Snowdrift. It's in a gallon container. Again, we use these all the times directly into the landscape. It gives you an instant impact in the landscape. Remember those Vista Snowdrifts, all that whole Supertunia Vista series are super vigorous. They're the most vigorous petunia out there, so they will get some height to them and they will spread and fill in like crazy. So this is Snowdrift and then Silverberry is right here beside of me. Snow, uh, Silverberry has a little bit of a pink hue to it with some pink veining. So this is a great one. Um, all of them are fantastic to put into the ground. Um, let's see, Jerry. Speaking of all the vistas, here we go. So there's the fuchsia, the hot pink, the snowdrift, the paradise. This is not a vista, but this is still a supertunia, one of the most popular ones. That is supertunia Picasso in purple. It's really unique because it has that green edging on it with that really nice hot magenta center. Um, again, the Picassos do great. 
They're very heat tolerant. They do excellent in containers and the landscape. And you can see here all um, just a side by side comparison of the differences in Supertunias. While there are very similar, there are a little bit of differences in them. So this sign that we have here at the nursery helps our customers to um, really understand and know the difference between the different series of the Supertunias because depending on how you want to use it, maybe you choose a different petunia. I still love that name, petunia. I am joke with my kids. I'm like, next time we have a, our next pet, we're going to name her petunia. And they're like, mom, that's a flower. I'm like, I know. All right. Finally have gotten warm enough here in North Carolina. Caladiums. The caladiums are uh, have broken out of dormancy. They are growing. They are doing fantastic. Guys, this last year was my first year landscaping, gardening with the caladiums from Proven Winners. And dear heavens, if you are especially, and I'm talking to my southern gardeners right now, because caladiums absolutely thrive in our heat and humidity. The stickier it is outside, the happier these plants are. So if you are looking for low maintenance, really high performing plants that bring you color to your garden, you need caladiums in your life. Now, do they flower? No. Do they have gorgeous color? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'll let Jerry pan through here. This is, this first one is um, the kind of the whitish one, is the um, white wonder. And even though it's called white wonder, it still has some of that pink veining in it. So you can have that white with that little bit of pink. Guys, I used these in window boxes last year. I used them in hanging baskets. They make a stunning hanging basket. Beautiful. Um, you can put them in the landscape. This year I'm going to be using them in the landscape. Then we come over here, and this is called, the next one that Jerry's going to show you is Fast Flash. Fast Flash is going to be more of the red. A nice, deep red center with green edging. And as the summer and the heat climbs, these just continue to grow and fill in and get huge leaves on them. Just wonderful. And what's great about these that we have here at the nursery is that they can do sun or shade. So let's go around while we're still on caladiums and let's go, cause there's some more over here. Um, sun or shade. So you can, I mean, extremely versatile. So if you, you know, okay, here we go. If you just need low maintenance bugs, the Japanese beetles didn't like them. I didn't have slug issues. They were just so easy. Scarlet Flame. Now, Scarlet Flame is still in that red family, but it has, it has a little bit more of some pink veining in it. So, so a little bit more of a pink and the red together with that green edging. Um, just again, super easy, super nice. Um, I just can't tell you enough how much you need to have caladiums in your life because they're so stinking easy and they're just beautiful. Herbs, amazel basil. If you're looking for the PW, the amazel basil, we've got it. Here it is. It's gorgeous. Remember this amazel basil is downy mildew resistant, which is a huge plus for us here in the south with our heat and humidity. This one plant will get huge. By the end of the season, it can easily be like three feet tall. Makes glorious pesto. It's a Genovese um, basil, so you can cook with it. You can, however you want to use basil. This is a fantastic one. <clears throat> like I said, last year I made so much pesto, the kids were like, okay, it's enough pesto, mom. Uh, Christine and I were having some fun putting some containers together. This is a little fun one. This is, um, we have some sweet customers who do a lot of antiquing and they were here, gosh, I guess it was last year or the year before. Anyway, they gave us a ton of really cute little things that they had that they thought that I could use in the garden. So this is a sweet little old wagon. We put the double up pink begonias in here, the whirlwind blue scavola, and then two of the alyssums in here. So very versatile, loves the sun, loves the heat. All of this will do well. It gets hit by the 
um, sprinkler, so it's very happy. This will all fill in the scavola and the alyssum will spread. Begonias will get nice and full. And I love these pinks because they have such, you know, beautiful green leaves with that kind of that pinky red edge on the leaf. It's fantastic. And then, I don't know if Jerry's showing you, that's the Julia Child rose tree form of the rose. They are just right now, just beautiful. They are in full bloom. They are loving life. Um, these are great for your landscape. If you want to fill in a bed, um, make like a focal point, you need a little height in a flower bed, but you don't want like a whole, like a tree, like a traditional tree, these would be great. And of course you can put them in containers as well. I want to show you this as we're give you updates on all the things. Um, the grill, the grill is coming along quite nicely. These echinacea, this is I think the third year that the echinacea have been in this grill. They just overwinter here, they do great. Um, there's Lakota fire and then there's some, the sombrero yellow. They are loving life. They're already putting on heads. So it's not gonna be too long before they bloom. And then of course I added some annual color with the Super Bells, Dreamsicle and the orange the Goldilocks Rocks Bidens. And then tucked under here is the Royale Red Zone Lantana that is new this year. Um, so again, the Lantana will really take off once we get a lot of good heat in here and just fill in and do fantastic. Let's go across the bridge. Let's see what's going on across here in the pines. I know I showed, I think I showed you this last week, but I want to give you an update. <laughs> Everybody who comes to the nursery is having fits over this little redhead spigelia. It is doing so amazing. It is absolutely gorgeous. Everybody who comes is like, where is that plant? I want to buy it. Um, so <laughs> unfortunately we can't get any of the rootstock until next spring. Um, so we will certainly have it, but this is a native plant. It can do sun to part shade. This particular spot is in complete shade until about one or two because the sun comes over and but then it gets the hot, intense afternoon sun. So it's extremely versatile. Hummingbirds go nuts over it, as you can imagine with that bright red and then the really kind of that cupped flower on it so they can get in there and feast upon it. So it is doing well. Um, they're just doing great right here. This is the Invincible Ruby. I planted her last year. Really, it was probably a little bit too late in the season to plant her, like it was July, August. I mean, it was really, really hot. So she struggled a little bit right here because this is not on any kind of irrigation, um, but she is coming back this year. Remember with your, um, really with your perennials and your shrubs, give them three years. I know that sounds a little crazy, but give them the full three years to really get established and really get going. So in the gardening world, there's a saying, the um, sleep, creep, leap. The first year they sleep, which she slept last year, she's creeping, she's slowly getting big, and then finally um, leap. So next year, I really suspect her to grow and just do fantastic. This is a beautiful mop head, hydrangea from Proven Winners that will have a beautiful blush ruby color to it. The trial plants, the trial eucharis are doing amazingly well here. Remember this is, it's not black pearl. It looks like black pearl. It's not. It is evening gown, bigger, more intense. So I don't know if Jerry has the whole shot. This is evening gown and that's black pearl. So if you can kind of see the difference between the two, evening gown has huge leaves, a more intense, deep color, even here. Obviously they get the exact same amount of sun. Um, their blooms are pretty much the same color. Evening gown is just like black pearl on steroids. It's doing great. And then the smoke and mirrors down here is also lots of new growth. Very happy doing well. Um, coming on in, whew, spider webs. <sighs> You ever get like you're the first person to go through your garden in the morning and you're the one that catches all the spider webs? <laughs> and then you look like a crazy person because you're doing this. Am I the only one that does that? Okay, well, there you go. All right, here we go. Look at these beautiful hydrangeas. 
These right here that are blooming, these are all Penny Mac hydrangeas. Um, they were developed in Georgia. They are beautiful, classic mop head hydrangeas. Obviously, they're going to be, the color is going to depend on your pH level of your soil. These are in containers. This has more of a pink blush, and this has more of a blue. Once it gets established in your garden, um, you will have your colors you can change the color by adding lime or so forth to your soil and change that up if you want to. Here we typically have really acidic soil so they tend to be more on the blue side. Um, let's see Jerry, what am I missing? What do I need to talk about? Let's do come, um, I know maybe, okay let's do this. Come on over here, give you a little update on <laughs> Ah, the refrigerator. The drinking gourd hosta, everybody that comes is just fascinated and wants to see the refrigerator. Well, here you go. Um, she is starting to bloom. I had talked about possibly removing the lady in red fern behind her um, and because so that way the fern could have some room to grow. However, I thought, well, if I do that, I'll probably destroy one or two of the plants. So we're just gonna leave it. I'll probably do it this fall before the winter comes. But I do love how um, the lady in red, the fern is starting to peek out through the middle of the drinking gourd. I suspect that will continue to happen. And then of course over here, the astilbe is beginning to bloom with its beautiful color. Um, so she is doing just fine and doing really well. I do want to give you an update on the, um, the new little trial beds that we were doing because they are really starting to come into their own and doing quite well. So if you will remember a uh, week, two ago, we talked about how we installed the Eucara bed. Again, we wanted to have a spot where we could trial these Eucaras in the ground because I personally have found Eucaras coral bells, if you wanna call them, um, perform differently for me in the ground versus in a pot. I have personally had more success with my Eucaras in a pot versus the ground. So again, this is a great test zone because yet again, here I have another evening gown right here, another smoke and mirrors, and then another black pearl. So, and then of course there's Lemon Love right here. Lemon Love is the one that you see when you come across the bridge. So I'm putting them in the ground. Let's see how they do. And then while this is not a Euchra, this is a fantastic shade perennial. This is the Sun King, which is a spike nard. Um, have this over at our house in the shade garden and it does, it's huge. Like ours this year is already probably this tall. So I can just see it filling in this area and bringing a bright pop of color to this Euchara bed. And then remember the hydrangeas? Well, the hydrangeas are starting to put on a little bit of color, a little bit of color more and more every day. Now, I have not put I know, I'm sorry. Have not put my signs up yet on saying who is who. I still have them attached to the plant. This is Tough Stuff Aha. So this is, all of these are from Proven Winners except for the Heartthrob, which is from Southern Living. So Tough Stuff Aha is, you can tell, is gonna be a lace cap hydrangea. Lace caps are different than the mop heads because on the outer rim, they will have these nice big petals. And then on the inside, the interior of the bloom will be little small petals. So it's a lace cap. It looks lacy. Then I believe this is just plain tough stuff right here. This is a fun one. Look at the color on this one. This is the Let's Dance Can. No, hang on. I'm sorry. Big Band. Look at that beautiful color. Is that not glorious? So this will be, of course, a mop head, a great traditional nice ball. Um, just a beautiful, deep, rich pink. Um, I love it even when it's still just kind of emerging because you've got the lime green next to that hot pink. So it is doing really well. <clears throat> and then coming down, this is the one from Southern Living. This is the heartthrob. Now, notice that um, a nice, darker, richer color. And Jerry, I don't know if you can get it. I want you to zoom on here. Look, look who is on the plant. You see that? 
So guess what Jenny's gonna do? Jenny's gonna go get her slug bait <laughs> and treat this area because that is a slug. Slugs, of course, love it moist and damp. Well, hello, we live in the South, right? We have hot, humid nights. These are what will actually put holes on the interior of your leaves. They will not kill your plant, but they just make it look really, really unsightly. So we're going to um, get him with a, ugh, they're gross. Yuck. Sorry, dude. You're not eating on my garden. Um, and then here we have Giddy and Grumpy. So a wee bit giddy and a wee bit grumpy. Um, again, I was, these are brand new from Southern Living, not Southern Living, I'm sorry, Proven Winners. Trying to decide who is, this is grumpy. Jerry is showing you giddy. Trying to figure out exactly a side-by-side -side comparison of how these two are different. Um, so the course are gonna be nice and petite. There are those, you know, great mop heads. Again, look at this though, Jerry. So on the bloom here, you have beautiful rich color around the outside of the petal and then on the inside is still kind of that limey um, green color so it's not going to be a solid pink you're going to have a little bit of variation in there really fun and then next door here is the um, little quick fire little quick fires are great it is a pinnacle hydrangea it loves them more of the sun so this is why we kind of stuck it here on the furthest side gets a lot of sun and it also has beautiful red tints to its stems um, just is a beautiful beautiful plant have one of these right beside the patio and it's already putting on lots of buds this will be its second or third year right there so of course it's a lot bigger more more buds on it and it does get more sun than this one so it's just a little bit more advanced so you can still have the same plant in different areas of your garden and it can perform a little bit different because it has just slight, maybe slightly different um, growing conditions so that's just a fun thing to kind of watch to see the difference on how your plants grow in different parts of your garden. I think that's about it for today. Um, we are getting ready to open for our Saturday sales so if you are in the area please come by and see us. We are here Thursdays through Saturday 9 to 4. Um, We've had some sweet folks from all over. You don't even have to be local. You can be several states away. We had Cassandra and her husband were here from right outside of Akron, Ohio. They drove like nine hours to get here. We had a sweet mom and daughter from Georgia that came and saw us on Thursday. So we make a great day trip or a weekend trip. So come see us. We would love to meet you in person. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.